There is a whole world of coffee cocktails out there, and you might think that most of them are going to be more at home in the colder months, an after dinner by the fire kind of thing. But it is summer where I'm at, and I still want my coffee, so let's take a look at some hot weather coffee drinks today. <laughs> So I'm talking about drinks that I would consider to be summer-appropriate coffee cocktails today, and I'm happy to say that I'm teamed up with Mr. Black again to do so. So thank you, Mr. Black, for sponsoring this one. Mr. Black is a cold brew coffee liqueur that is made from 100% ethically sourced Arabica coffee beans. It has very little sugar in it, especially when you compare it to other coffee liqueurs that are on the market. And I personally think that that makes it super handy behind the bar, because if you ever need that extra sweetness in a cocktail, you can always add it back in, but at least here, the option is yours. Mr. Black was founded in Australia in 2013, and yes, they roast all the beans themselves in the same building where they mix up batches of this fantastically caffeinated quaff. So go by their website, mrblack.co, to learn all about how they make it, some other recipes that they might suggest, and more importantly, where you can buy it. All right, I've got a few drinks to get through in this episode. Uh, most of these come from other sources, but I do have my own original, I hope it's my own original, anyway, contribution to this little drink pantheon uh, that comes later in the episode. But right now, I want to get this thing going with a Margarita Negra. And I'm gonna serve this one in a double old fashioned with a salted rim. Although actually I'm gonna change that up a little bit and go for a tahini rim. So I'm gonna start with the glass that I'll serve it in, which is right here. And uh, I will take a lime, cut that lime into wedges. I mean, I think a half would have been fine. <laughs> but whatever, I did it this way. This is the way I've done it and now I'm stuck. I'm gonna do like a 50-50. I'll do half the rim salt, right? So a uh, glass like this actually makes that pretty easy because you have these nice little hash marks. <laughs> Okay, there's our lime juice. I will take some tahini, put it on my bar. You know, I'm using my cutting board here uh, that a fan made for me. If you had something a little more artful, that would be fine too. And here we go. Just kind of roll it back and forth in there. Press it in pretty hard. There we go. There's our glass with a half rim of tahini. We'll put this on the side until we're ready for it. Now that is set. I do need my shaker. In the shaker, I'm gonna add half an ounce of agave syrup, which does have a very different, a slightly different vibe than a simple syrup. Could you get away with a simple syrup here? I think so. But if you have the agave, go with the agave. I need an ounce of lime juice. There we go. Uh, I need one ounce of a Blanco tequila. I'm gonna go with Casamigos here. I actually think that they make a really nice Blanco. And uh, one ounce of Mr. Black. And with Mr. Black, by the way, you might find some sediments on the bottom. Just give it a shake. That's just good coffee stuff. Get it, get it mixed in there before you use it. Boom, right in there. I'm gonna shake this over ice. Big old cube, one cube, I will crack. I'm gonna strain that into a double rocks glass that we have prepared here. Do I wanna put it on the rocks, on in a cube? Um, yeah, let's put it on the ice. Put a cube into your double rocks, strain that in. Garnish it with like a lime wheel or a wedge, something lime. I think that'll look nice. Perfect. And uh, there we have a margarita negra. So it's a coffee margarita. Let's see how it is. Ooh, that is good. Oh man. Ooh, ooh, that is so wonderful. What a surprising drink that can be. I, I have to say, I went a little off script here by using the tahini, but I think the combination of the salt and chili with the coffee, which coffee is adjacent to chocolate. As a matter of fact, a lot of your favorite chocolate desserts, the secret ingredient is coffee grinds. That spicy chocolate thing happens, which is awesome. <laughs> really cool here. Very, very cool. Um, I'm actually, I think that uh, change that officially. Make that the tahini for the wheel, for the garnish, uh, for the rim. Make it always tahini this. You may not think that citrus, lime, and coffee work well together, they work supremely well together. You know, I think that there is a tradition actually of taking a shot of espresso with a twist of lemon peel over it. There is something about the combination. Orange works well as well with a coffee flavor. I mean, you have to balance it and you can't overdo it, but here it's on the money. It is a great, very approachable drink. It is super duper tasty, very balanced between coffee and lime flavors, uh, sweet and salt, spicy and chocolate. Uh, there's a lot going on in this simple drink, which I think is really tasty. Mmm, especially with the rim. Totally appropriate on a summer day. Delicious, really delicious. The only thing that's maybe a little bit lost, honestly, 
is your tequila. Everybody else is loud and upfront, balanced, but very present in this drink. The tequila makes it a margarita. You can't sub out the tequila, stick with tequila. Don't say, oh, well, if you can't taste the tequila, use vodka. Don't do that. I do think that would be a mistake. I think that would, the tequila is working here in imperceptible ways because tequila has a whole plethora of flavors that it's bringing a real foundation, um, a lot of base notes in that tequila, a lot of um, uh, roasting notes in a tequila, not muddled, mild, you know, not like, a, not like a mezcal. But if you strip all that away, even though you cannot detect it in the flavor profile, I think you would rip the foundation out of this drink, so to speak, if you were to replace it with vodka. Don't do that. On the other hand, maybe don't reach for your top shelf Blanco tequilas, right? Because like, it's not tequila forward. I think that the uh, Casamigos is excellent here, absolutely excellent, but I, I think a lot of other Blanco tequilas would work just, just as well. Ooh, it's a wonderful drink. This is a delight, a real pleasant surprise, honestly, because I've never had one before. <laughs> oh, that's so good. It grabs the sides of your tongue, that sweet sour thing, uh, and it really activates that. I mean, it is a very good drink. This is a wonderful drink. Mm. Go with the tahini though. Oh my God, super fun, super good. Mmm, that spicy chocolate thing happens there. That's great, even though it's coffee. And as you can see, I'm feeling a little more awake already. I got my coffee now, I'm feeling good. Before I move on to the next drink, I've got to stop and talk about another drink called the Mr. Bali High, which is a coffee-based tiki drink that should not be missing from any list of summer coffee cocktails. But the thing is, Cara Devine already did a fantastic episode on it complete with the history of it and, and everything. And frankly, you should just check out hers. I'm gonna put a link in the pinned comp below, but I do have one here that I've made through the magic of editing. It's made with three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, an ounce and a half of pineapple juice, an ounce of uh, Demerara Simple, a little less than an ounce of, of Mr. Black and two ounces of rum, usually split between one and a half ounces of something like dark and mellow, like a Demerara, and um, uh, an ounce of an unaged rum, you know, something I would go Jamaican and funky. I would do something like uh, Ray and Nephew. Um, or maybe, you know, ounce and a half of uh, Eldorado 8 and a half an ounce of Ray and Nephew, right? Shake it up over crushed ice, open pour into a tiki mug, and let's see how it is. Mm, delicious combination of coffee and exotic crumbs. It's heaven in a glass. And again, you get that wonderful collaboration between citrus flavors and pineapple, which is not technically citrus, but does actually work really good here with the with the coffee it is a surprising drink it's a delicious drink there's a lot more to say on it it's, it's seriously worth checking out kara's video over on the channel behind the bar some cool movie trivia about this drink that i didn't know before i watched her video uh there's a link in the pin comp below mm. putting this aside for now so next up is a riff on a shaken negroni it's gonna be bright bitter fresh perfect for a hot summer day this is the cold brew shakerado i'm going to need a shaker obviously into this shaker, I will add an ounce of fresh orange juice, which I have, I've pre-squeezed right here. Mm. So orange, so fresh. I need one ounce of Campari, which is actually up here on the top rail. Okay, an ounce of Campari. I need one ounce of a London dry gin. I'm gonna go with Gordon's for this one. There's nothing wrong with Gordon's. Gordon's a great gin and I happen to have some, so I'm gonna go with Gordon's. Now I need one ounce of Mr. Black. Like on the Gronies, it's equal parts, so it's easy to remember. Well, that's not why it's equal parts, but well, maybe it is why it's equal parts. It's equal parts and it's easy to remember. Is it equal parts so it's easy to remember? Maybe. I'm gonna shake this up. Got my ice. One in there, this one I'll crack. Okay, here we go, shaking. The cold brew shakerado. Okay, um, grab a coupe. Or in my case, I'm gonna go with the Nick and Nora. We'll see if this works out or not. It might be a little too small, but that's okay. I just thought it would look nice, you know? Strain away. Boom. Was a little small, but that's okay. And for a garnish, we need a twist of orange peel. Uh, there it is, the cold brew shakerato. Let's see how it is. Oh, what a great coffee and orange nose it has too. Ooh, very dry. Very nice, refreshing, light, almost a floral thing that happens between the interplay of the coffee and the orange oils. And maybe that's also some of the orange flavoring of Campari. Campari does have a lot of orange component as a flavor component. It's a lot of bitter orange. I don't think I'm making that up. This drink is a bracing, cold, bitter, kind of an eye opener drink. Um, certainly a palate cleanser, very uh, uh, dry sort of dinner component, you know, something to uh, 
doesn't make you heavy. It's not, it's not a heavy drink. It's a real lightweight drink. It does not kind of slow you down. Not a, no syrups here. It's a crisp, bitter coffee aperitif. Um, it's very nice. It's very, very nice, refreshing. Uh, certainly a good hot weather drink. Excellent balance. It's easy for Campari to really dominate a drink. It doesn't here. Uh, coffee comes through loud and clear. Gin as well. You certainly get some of that light, bright, bracing juniper note from the gin here. So I think the, 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 the um, Campari is kept well in check. It has a very, you know what it's kind of like? You know, I, I, I keep making this comparison because coffee and chocolate share a lot of the same flavor, but this is like a very very bitter, like a 95 or 80%, 90% cacao chocolate bar, you know, just like very dark chocolate. Still reads in that space though, you know, it's not past that point. So I'd say if you like high 80s, low 90s cacao chocolate, and I do, you'll enjoy this. This is very nice. Honestly, I think it might benefit if we wanted to jazz it up. I happen to have this right here, but I, you know, you do like a salted chocolate, a salted caramel. I have a funny feeling that a dash or two of, um, this is a saline solution. Might actually help that drink a huge amount um, as opposed to adding sweetness, which would also be, I don't think a bar spoon of simple syrup would be a, a huge mistake here, although it does kind of get away from it being a Negroni at that point. Oh man, yes, salt, saline solution, just a dash or two. Um, and that's just eight grams of water and two grams of salt combined. Really helps hone in on those bitter chocolate coffee flavors, really nice. Not a necessary addition. You know, that saline is not a necessary addition, but when I can, I like to throw out suggestions on how to, you know, dress it up a little bit. All right, finally, my final drink, and this is my own original contribution. I hope it's original to this. Um, I don't always order it when I'm out or when I order Thai food, but I am kind of a sucker for Thai iced coffee. I've never been to Thailand, so I don't actually know how common it is over there if it's just a thing for American Thai food restaurants. My minimal amount of Googling on this tells me it is actually common beach treat over in Thailand. In researching this, I had to learn how to make a Thai iced coffee. It's pretty simple. The basics are just strong coffee, sweetened condensed milk and cardamom, actually. Cardamom may not make it into everybody's recipe, but it does seem to be a pretty consistent thread throughout various approaches to Thai iced coffee I've seen. I've seen some recipes that call for additional sugar or vanilla. I mean, I think you can complicate this as much as you want. Uh, it's up to you. I wanted to create a cocktail version though of that. I wanted to create a cocktail version of Thai iced coffee. So the first thing I did was I made some Demerara simple syrup, which um, is right here, uh, that is infused with cardamom. And a uh, very simple thing, I just did um, 200 grams of water, 400 grams of sugar, and I think it was like two or three grams at most of cardamom seeds just in the pan, simmered it, let it sit for a few minutes, and then strained them out and, and bottled it. And it does impart a very subtle flavor of cardamom. I also picked up a bottle of this Mekong, which has this little ribbon around it that kind of keeps working in front of the label, uh, which is, according to the bottle, this is really the spirit of Thailand. Uh, a very clever pun there. This is sort of the national spirit of Thailand. Um, even though they regard it as a spiced whiskey, it's a distillate, 95% sugar, 5% rice. So really it's more of a rum or even a Batavia Iraq. Let's have a little taste. And I made a mental note to grab a tasting glass for this. I, I failed. Can I just have it out of my jigger? Yes, that'll be fine. Uh, let me tell you exactly what this is like. Um, pretty neat stuff, and here we go. Mm. It has a very um, butterscotch nose. Yeah, like a, a like a butterscotch liqueur almost. Not quite. I mean, not a liqueur because this is pretty high proof, right? This is thirty five percent alcohol, so I guess it might be sold as a liqueur legally speaking, but it's right shy of a straight spirit. Um, but it does have a lot of butterscotch nose to it. It's not too sweet, but it's definitely sweetened to some degree, but I wouldn't say it's like, it's not syrupy, it's not like a cream or something like that. By the way, if you don't know, um, depending on their bricks content, their sugar quotient, a liqueur at a certain point becomes a cream if it has some sugar in it. Yeah, it's nice, it's like a little butterscotchy, which I think is gonna work really good. Well, I know it does, because I made this drink for, it does work really good in this Thai iced coffee for this. So my recipe for this like goes like this, okay? I'm gonna build it in the glass, I see no reason not to and the glass I'm gonna use is this highball. I'm gonna crack some ice straight into this highball glass to the degree that I can. It's a little tricky to make it all fit in there. You could go crushed ice. I think cracked ice is my personal preference, but it's not rocket science. So um, I wanna crack my ice straight into my Collins glass. And I'm gonna build the drink on top of that. I think that, frankly, this is a cocktail that should be pretty quick to make and very low effort. <laughs> I don't have any problem with a lot of things working that way. So I wanna to add to this an ounce of your cardamom simple syrup, 
This is just my standard simple syrup, which is two to one ratio with a bit of whole cardamom added uh, to the pan and simmered. I used three grams of cardamom, 200 grams of water, 400 grams of sugar to make this to give you an idea of a ratio you can follow. As soon as you open this bottle, you smell the cardamom. So, I mean, it's a powerful flavor. That syrup has a subtle spice factor, really good. It's really neat. Actually, make for probably a cool soft drink with that, actually. Just add some carbonated water to that, some cardamom soda. If you love cardamom, I suppose, you, if you really, really love cardamom, increase the ratio if you want, go nuts. Personally, I think it's a little bit, it can be an overpowering flavor, so I want to be careful with it. If you just want to use a standard simple, go for it. This is not going to be vital to the drink. Make this as you like. Next, I'm going to add an ounce of Mr. Black to the drink. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. And now I need an ounce and a half of Mekong. You know, play with that ratio if you like. For me, this was the right way to do it. An ounce of Mr. Black to an ounce and a half of Mekong. And I hope I'm saying that right, Mekong. And I might have a little too much ice in my glass, but that's okay. Now, in my reading about Thai iced coffee, I found that the standard recipes generally call for sweetened condensed milk. My research may be faulty, so maybe that's not really the standard way to go, but whatever the case, I think that that's gonna be the wrong move for this drink. This drink is already sweet enough, and condensed milk is also very thick and pretty sweet. I tested this with heavy cream. That yielded an absolutely decadent result that was not without merit, but it was just too damn heavy for me. Too much so to be like the standard presentation of this drink, though I, I do think that if you like it that way, go for it. The heavy cream is not terrible, it's just whoo, heavy. Uh, it's actually delicious. It makes it almost like ice cream. I tried whole milk and having come from the heavy cream, the whole milk felt really thin, but okay. I imagine half and half wouldn't be actually a crazy nut place to go and I just never got around to testing that. So, you know, let me uh, know if you try it. But this can of evaporated milk from Carnation, which is where it comes from, uh, that struck a very nice balance. So I'm gonna add an ounce or maybe in two ounces if you like your coffee a little lighter than that, right? Boom. And truly, I think we only have room for an ounce, so. Oh yeah, right to it. There you go. And look at that working its way down. It looks exactly like a Thai iced coffee. And there it is. Either let that precipitate down and layer up or give it a quick stir with your straw. And honestly, I probably should have stirred this before I got to this point to combine the sugar and the coffee. I may have messed up a little bit here. Messed up my own drink. And let's see how this is. This is uh, my Mr. Black Thai iced coffee. It's so good. That is a delicious, delicious, creamy, sweet coffee treat. Absolutely on the nose too, I think, as far as Thai iced coffee goes. If you've ever had that, it's a pretty sweet, almost dessert-like coffee treat. You get this sweet, spicy cardamom, and there it is, it comes back too, coffee thing. The Mekong plus the coffee and sweetness somehow gets to vanilla, so there's definitely a lot of vanilla flavor in this overall thing. The whole thing is, and I think the evaporated milk is the way to go, but whatever, try what you like. But I think the evaporated milk lends just the right amount of creamy kind of thickness to this. It has a, uh, it's very nice, it's very nice. I guess it would be terrible if you were, if you were lactose intolerant, maybe this would be the wrong drink. Uh, it's, it's a little desserty, you know, this might be a bit sweet. Maybe you can cut the sweetness, but, you know, I think, um, Maybe three quarters of an ounce, maybe half an ounce. Maybe an ounce is too much, but it's not bad. It's not bad. It just might not be uh, what you want every time you have this, you know? I do think that that is comparable to the sweetness of a Thai iced coffee though. I think that's exactly right. Oh, I like that a lot. I just want to have some like, um, mm, 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 chicken like Brick King or um, Pad Ki Mao. Mm, yes, very good. It's good. It's very good. You will enjoy this. So that's my own uh, Mr. Black summer drink. I don't know if other people are making something like this, but I bet they're not. <laughs> Mekong was pretty hard to find. Oh, I made three drinks. And I talked about a fourth, right? We made uh, Margarita Negra, which was delicious and salty and spicy and really good. Really, really, really good way to show off Mr. Black and the benefits of a less sweet coffee liqueur that you can do other things with. Uh, same thing for this, right? This is the um, cold brew shakerado. Really lends, leans into the dryness uh, even more than this of Mr. Black and its ability to go into a, a spirit or bitter forward drink. Um, I did make my own little contribution here. This is my Thai iced coffee, my Mr. Black Thai iced coffee. Polar opposite, chocolate milk, very sweet coffee, kind of dessert treat 
grown up milkshake kind of thing, delicious. And I made a reference, of course, to the Mr. Bally High. Uh, I endorse fully you checking out Miss Cara Devine's video over at Behind the Bar. She has a lot to say about this drink and it's a great one and a great place to use your Mr. Black. Thank you again to Mr. Black for sponsoring this episode and uh, giving me the ability to talk about summer hot weather uses of a coffee liqueur, a coffee spirit behind the bar, right? Great ways to enjoy coffee when it's hot out because coffee in the heat can be tough, right? So aptly, all of these I think are great hot weather drinks. Uh, depending on your own personal tastes. They kind of cover the gamut here. Check them out, mrblack.co, to find out where you can pick it up nearby you. Um, and thanks one, one, one more time. Thank you one more time, Mr. Black, for sponsoring this episode. You can find me on Twitter at How to Drink, on Instagram at How to Drink. I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. And if any parts of this episode were a little too weird for the YouTube cut, you might find them over at Patreon. I do live things over at twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD, right here from my bar, over at my you know, computer, my command center over in the lounge. We play tabletop role-playing games. I'm, I do all kinds of things on there. It's, you know, it's a free for all. Uh, if you want to hang out with me, I'm over there on Twitch. Uh, and I'll see you guys really soon with another episode of How to Drink. Hey, if you like this one, I've been making the show for, well, for a long time. And so there's a lot of episodes. And if you're new to the show, maybe you haven't seen some of the older ones. Why don't you check out one of these? Oh, 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 look at these episodes. Did you see these episodes? If you have, I'm gonna ask that you find another episode of How to Drink to watch. See you soon with another new episode. And until then, do nothing but watch old episodes of How to Drink. This is like um like a nocino quality, actually, when it's all put together. I didn't I just caught that. Hmm. See you soon. Thank you so much for watching.